Okay, before we get started, brothers and sisters, ladies and gents, we're going to have the reading of the law from Exodus chapter 20, Ecclesiastes 12, and Revelations 22. And after that, we'll jump right into today's lesson. We're going to start at Exodus 20 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show a mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Thank you for that, brother. <clears throat> Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12. We're going to read those last two verses. Okay, go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole <laughs> matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, so we're going to go to our next place, our last one, Revelations chapter 22. We're going to read verses 14 and 15. Go ahead, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Thank you, brother. And so that's what we do at all of our Israel of God locations. We have the reading of the law before we start the lesson, because if you definitely want to make it in to the gates, through the gates into that city, then you have to keep these commandments. So... First and foremost, to all the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob here in Hayward, California, I want to say good morning. Good morning. good morning. good morning. And welcome home here to the Israel of God Bible study class where we teach the Bible by subject and title. Uh, my name is Brother James, for those that don't know me. Uh, and reading for us today is Brother Otis. So, uh, and also, we want to say a good morning to those that are watching us online. And before, let's give our musical ensemble one more round of applause for that <laughs> ministry in music, which we truly appreciate. Mm -hmm. So look, brothers and sisters, we live in a very busy and complicated society today. It is loaded with distractions, drama, politics, and all sorts of various troubles, okay? But in the midst of all of that, we are still to do our best, our very best to seek God and to please him. Even though we are being hit from every side, that's our job and our duty. And we even read it, it's our whole duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. So it doesn't matter what's going on or who's going on, we're supposed to seek to please our God, okay? And today's lesson is titled, Seek Ye First the Kingdom. Seek Ye First the 
kingdom is today's title. Because on your way to getting into God's kingdom, if that's definitely where you're trying to go, the Lord will even in this life before getting to the kingdom, he will bless your home. He will bless your marriage, your finances, your health, your children, your food and your water on your way to getting into the kingdom. There's all kinds of benefits to putting him first. So the question is, who is it, what is it, and where is it that you're going to put before getting into the kingdom? That's the question from today's lesson. Because if the Lord say, take three steps forward, make a right turn, take five steps and make a left, that's what he wants you to do. Mm-hmm. But you have people that say, well, you know, well, I didn't do this that the Lord told me to do because I had to do that because I got to go make this money. I got to pay PG&E. I got to pay for my kids' tuition. Well, get what? Make your money. Pay PG&E and pay for your kids' tuition, but do it while you're taking them three steps forward, making that right turn, taking them five steps, and then making that left turn. Whatever it is you're doing, you better do it within what the Lord told you to do. Because when you start separating them, that's when you start getting yourself in trouble. When you start operating outside of things that make it look like to him that you're seeking the kingdom, that's when you're getting yourself in trouble. So whatever it is you have going on, you have to do it within seeking to get into the kingdom of God. And that's why Paul multiple times called himself a prisoner of Christ. Because there are boundaries that you have to operate inside of while you do whatever you do in this life. But you had better seek the kingdom first. Okay? And Jesus was God in the flesh when he said that. But let's start this, today's lesson off in Revelation chapter 21. We're going to pick it up at verse 10. He said, seek ye first the kingdom. And then all that other stuff that you need and want, they'll be added to you. But you have to keep your priorities lined up and not get in danger of putting God third and fourth and eleventh on your list of priorities. That's a very dangerous, slippery slope to get yourself on. Mm -hmm. Revelations 21 and 10, my brother, go ahead and read it. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain Mm -hmm. and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Go ahead. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So we see this new Jerusalem, which we read in the reading of the law in Revelation 22. It says, but if you are the dogs and the liars and those that sin against God, you won't get into this city. You won't get in there. Go ahead and read, brother. No, skip down to verse 19 and continue. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Mm-hmm. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedon- chalce- chalcedony, mm-hmm. the fourth an emerald, Go ahead. the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, mm-hmm. the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a uh, chrys- chrys- mm-hmm. the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth and amethyst. We can't even imagine anything that looks like that. But that's what's going to be in the Father's kingdom. Go ahead and read, brother. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Mm-hmm. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Can you imagine one gate just being a pearl? One pearl that big with a giant gate? Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. And I saw no temple therein. Why? For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Don't y'all want to get into that day right there to see that? Mm-hmm. Were you right there with the Father and the Son? Go ahead and read. And the city had no need of the sun, mm-hmm. neither of the moon, to shine in it. Mm-hmm. For the glory of God did lighten it, mm-hmm. and the Lamb is the light thereof. And I'm telling y'all that's something that we can try our best to picture that, but I want to get into that. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine anybody or anything, or any event here that's going to come 
before that to me. I can't imagine that. So I just wanted to hit us with a reminder of what we got on the table here. So let's go hit Isaiah chapter 14. I just want us to see what's on what's on the line here. What we what we can gain or what we can lose, okay? Isaiah 14, we're going to pick it up at the third verse. Isaiah 14 and verse 3. Because we just looked at the Father's kingdom. But before Jesus turned his kingdom over to the Father, you're going to have a thousand years of peace right here on this earth. We should be seeking to make that first resurrection to get into that, okay? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 14, my brother, and pick it up at verse 3. 14 and 3. Go ahead and read it. And it shall come to pass in the day that mm -hmm. the Lord sh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Yes. And from thy fear. Y'all see that? We are looking for that day. And I wish we had a day where we could rest from all sorrow and from all fears. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And from the hard bondage uh -huh. wherein thou wast made to serve. Skip down to verse 5 and continue. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked yes. and the scepter of the ruler. He's going to do that. Skip down to verse 7 and continue. The whole earth is at rest mm -hmm. and is quiet. Mm -hmm. They break forth into singing. We can't even imagine that with all this fighting going on, with all this politics going on, with all of this corruption, bribes, rape, kidnapping. But it says right here, the whole earth will be at peace. Don't we want to see that, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. We want to see that day where there's no sorrows and no fears. And, and when Jesus rules, that's what it's going to be. We should seek that first before anything else in this life. Because nothing else is more valuable than that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now, let's go and hit Matthew 6. And this is where we got today's title from. And we're going to let Jesus tell us. Because the question is, what is it that you have in your life that's more valuable than you getting the eternal life? What's more valuable than that? I would ask y'all the question, but I'm scared somebody might have an answer for that. <laughs> somebody might have an answer. Well, I got something more valuable, Brother James. Because I was in one class, and I asked, I asked them, I said, uh, who in here has a reason that they need, has God ever done anything you, you've had to forgive him? And a couple of people raised their hand. So I ain't going to even ask the question if you got something more important than getting into the kingdom. Somebody might surprise me and a hand will go up. Huh? <laughs> so I ain't going to ask y'all. But I'm going to suggest to you that you have nothing more, more important than you living eternally in God's kingdom and being a part of God's family as opposed to the only other option, being in that lake of fire. That's the only little option to that. There's no middle ground on it, okay? Matthew chapter 6, my brother, verse 25, what did it say? Therefore I say unto you, mm -hmm. take no thought for your life, mm -hmm. what you should eat or what you should drink. Go ahead. Nor yet for your body, what you should put on. Mm -hmm. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? It is. Go ahead. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. He said the birds, the fowls of the air, they sow not. Listen, they don't grow farms. Birds don't raise cattle and lamb. Go ahead and read. Neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Mm -hmm. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Uh huh. Are ye not much better than they? He said, but the God, the God, the Father feeds those birds. But are you not much greater than they are? So why are you worrying about food? But he's going to tell you what you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. Skip down, my brother. Hit that verse 31. Go ahead and read it. Therefore, take no thought, saying, mm -hmm. what shall we eat? Yes. Or what shall we drink? Mm -hmm. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? So don't worry about what you're eating and drinking and what clothes you're going to put on. Go ahead and read, brother. For after all these things mm -hmm. do the Gentiles seek. Yes. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The Father knows what you need before you even go to him. If you need some peace, he knows that. Mm -hmm. If you need a healing, he knows that. If you need a pay raise, he knows that too. And most of us sitting in here thinking we need one or two of those, okay? 
But he knows that too, okay? Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. But seek ye first the kingdom he of said, God. He said, but seek ye first. Seek this first now. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God, go ahead. And his righteousness. And his righteousness, go ahead. And all these things shall be added unto you. See, if you seek that first, then all that other stuff, you will definitely get that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you won't even have to ask for it. But if you seek in him, you think he don't see that? He sees that. But that's what we got today's title, Seek Ye First the Kingdom, because he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And did it say some of these things will be added? All these things. All of them will be added to you. We have to understand that. And that takes some hearing and believing that. Because mm -hmm. some people just don't believe that. But you have to believe what we read here. Okay? So now, let's go and hit Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Seek ye first the kingdom. Proverbs chapter 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 2. And I'm telling y'all, uh, I don't know of anything that is more important than, than that right there. Because if you can just imagine your whole body being in a fire, it's never going to go out. And it's never going to consume you away. And you're going to feel the pain of that fire burning you for the rest of time in a spirit body that cannot be consumed. At the same time, worms eating on you. That's the other option. Okay. 16 and 2, my brother, what did it say? All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Y'all see that? See, a man can easily slip into thinking that every move he makes is a right move. Mm. And a woman can too. He said, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. They think everything they do is right. And anytime something goes wrong, it's your fault that this wrong happened to me. Mm -hmm. It's your fault that this happened to me. It's your fault. Never look in the mirror and say, you know what? I need to adjust something. Maybe I need to change a little something, something. Mm -hmm. Always blaming somebody else because all his ways are clean in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. And he will never admit to any wrongdoing. Go ahead and read, brother. But the Lord weigheth the spirit. He does. Go ahead. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Commit your works to who? The Lord. Go ahead. And thy thoughts shall be established. Now skip down and hit that verse 6, brother. Go ahead. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Uh-huh. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And that's the only way you will depart from doing wrong is you get scared of God. And please believe me, he have ways to make you get scared of him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he'll give you a little room, give you a little bit more rope, and give you a little bit more rope. And once he sees that you won't make no corrections, then he'll weigh in on you. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather correct myself and humble myself than to have him to do it. Because at least if you write out a plan, well, you know what? I'm going to stop doing this uh, Friday. <laughs> then next Wednesday, I'm going to start doing this. It's going to be my first time doing that. At least, you, at least you have made your own plan to get right. But when the Lord makes the plan, it's very inconvenient for you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's just like paying, I always say, it, like paying your, your light bill late. Or your power bill late, because they're going to tack on a fee and another fee. You'll be like, wait a minute, what's all these fees? I only owed $180, but you telling me it's $260. Well, we got a $40 late fee, and we got a $40 reconnection fee. <laughs> and then we're going to tax you on that. Yeah. Huh? So it's always better to correct yourself before the Lord weigh in on you. Because when he do it, he sets it up a whole nother way, and it's always inconvenient for you. Mm. What verse is that, brother? We got seven. Go ahead and read it. When a man's way, ways please the Lord. So he said right here, however, but when a sister or a brother's ways please the Lord, go ahead and read. He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Then he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. So as long as you put in seeking God first, Seek him first. Seek that kingdom first. Any enemies you have, he'll make them get out your way and leave you alone. Mm. How about that? 
I like that one. So now, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. So he'll make his enemies get out of your way, whether they want to or not. Revelation 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. But the condition was your ways please him. That's the condition. Why? Because you seeking the kingdom first. You put that first on your list of priorities, okay? Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, verse 11, my brothers. 3 and 11. Go ahead and read that. Behold, I come quickly. Mm -hmm. Hold that fast which thou hast, mm -hmm. that no man take thy crown. Don't you let nobody take your crown from you. Because somebody close to you, they have the easiest road to take it from you. That brother at the gas station ain't going to take your crown from you. Most times, it's people real close to you. You work with them. you next door neighbor to them. It's a family member, a close friend. Those are the ones that can easily do it because they have easier access to you mm -hmm. and more power persuasion with you. He said, let no man take your crown. Go ahead and read. Him that overcometh, mm -hmm. will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? Y'all see that? So he didn't say he didn't say it's going to be easy this walk. He said you got to overcome this walk, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And he shall go no more out. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Go ahead. And the name of the city of my God, mm -hmm. which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon him my new name. Mm -hmm. So look, I know a lot of us wish. We could be in that one, and we want to be in there to have the Lord's name on us. But let's go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. And let's see something that Paul pointed out here. Because when you when you working to get into that kingdom, that's between you and your God. Mm -hmm. That's between you and your God. And we have to remember that Galatians chapter 1, and let's pick it up at verse 10, and let's highlight what the Apostle Paul is saying right here. Galatians 1 and 10. Go ahead and read that, brother. For do I now persuade men or God? So Paul asked him that question. Do I persuade men or do I persuade God? Go ahead and read. Or do I seek to please men? Uh-huh. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Do we get that, brothers and sisters? If you're seeking to please a person, and no, there's no way possible for you to be seeking to please God. Those two don't mix together. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But I certify you, brethren, mm -hmm. that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Go ahead. For I neither received it of man, mm -hmm. neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul made that plain and clear, and I went there to point it out. And he said, hey, if I'm seeking to please a man, I'm, I'm not pleasing Christ. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, let's go here, Jeremiah chapter 9. Because you can't trust this man. You better not. Jeremiah 9, let's pick it up in verse 4. Jeremiah 9 and verse 4. Because Paul said, look, I'm seeking to please God, not this man. And that's how we should be operating. Jeremiah 9 and 4, my brother, go ahead and read that. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor. He said, take heed to your neighbor. Why is that, brother? And trust ye not in any brother. Uh-huh. For every brother will utterly supplant. He said, because every one of them will utterly supplant. Go ahead and read. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. Y'all see that? And they'll walk with some slanders. Mm -hmm. What else, brother? And they will deceive every one his neighbor. And they'll deceive all the neighbors. Go ahead. And will not speak the truth. You see that? That's why you can't trust man. Because ain't nobody perfect. Trust your God, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. They have taught their tongues to speak lies. And then they have taught their tongue to speak lies. Go ahead. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. Look, let's go to 1 Samuel 10. Then they say they will wear themselves out to commit iniquity. Mm -hmm. They rested in their bed thinking about how can I do something wicked and evil tomorrow? Man. Huh? How can I hurt somebody tomorrow? Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I can do that, and then I can call so-and-so, then I can do this right here. 
Yeah, wear themselves out to go do something wrong. So don't trust no man, brothers and sisters. Trust in your God. 1 Samuel chapter 10, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Let's go look at this one brother. He was the first anointed king of the 12 tribes of Israel. Saul, he was the king before David. Let's look at this brother. 1 Samuel chapter 10, and let's pick it up at verse 1. King Saul right here. Go ahead and read it. Then Samuel took a vial of oil mm -hmm. and poured it upon his head and kissed him mm -hmm. and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? So that's one thing we see about King Saul. He was anointed. Mm -hmm. The Lord had him anointed, okay? Skip down, hit that verse 6. Go ahead and read that. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Okay, and then the, not only was he anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this brother. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. And that's the third thing. He's going to be turned to a new man. Mm. So that's three things we got about Saul. It seems like he's on his way to the kingdom, does it not? Mm. Anointed by God. The spirit of the Lord is on him. And he's going to be turned to another man. Mm. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. And when they came thither to the hill, mm -hmm. behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Yes. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets, then the people said one to another, mm -hmm. what is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Yes. Is Saul also among the prophets? Y'all see that? The brother was prophesying so of his word of God, the people say, is he among the prophets? Go ahead and read. And one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Mm -hmm. Therefore, it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? It became a proverb that Saul had that spirit of the Lord on him so heavy. So now, let's go down to uh, 1 Samuel 15. Let's turn over to that 15th chapter and see did he operate properly while he had this on him, Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Let's start at that first verse. It seems like Saul clearly is on his way to walking into the kingdom, okay? 1 mm -hmm. Samuel 15, verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Samuel also said unto Saul, mm -hmm. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, mm -hmm. over Israel. Yes, sir. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So, so Samuel the priest told Saul, So the Lord sent me to anoint you, so listen to his word, Saul. Listen to him, okay? Go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. I will. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, yep. how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, mm -hmm. but slay both man and woman, mm -hmm. infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So he made the instructions real plain. Was Saul supposed to leave anything or anybody alive? Nope. No. The Lord said go in there and wipe them out. That's mm -hmm. what he wanted because he remember what they did to Israel when they came out of Egypt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So skip down to verse 7 and continue. Brother go ahead and read it. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur. That is over against Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Wait a minute. He didn't kill him? Took him alive. Go ahead and read. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep mm -hmm. and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly, utterly destroy them. Mm -hmm. But everything that was vowed and refused that they destroyed Utterly. Oh, wow. So he didn't go in there and kill everybody. He kept the best of the animals. He kept the king. So clearly to us, we heard the instructions that he got mm -hmm. from the priest that was from the Lord. But let's see what happened. Skip down to verse 13 and continue. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, mm -hmm. Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Y'all see that? He said he performed the commandments of the Lord. It's like when we read in that Proverbs 16 and 2. A man's ways is clean in his own eye. Mm -hmm. Huh? Did we read that? Yep. 
We see an example of it right here. He think he's right when he's looking at it. Go ahead and read. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? So, so Samuel the priest said, okay, so if you did everything the Lord said, why is that I hear these sheep, man? If you did what you were supposed to do. Go ahead and read. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. Yes. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. But we didn't ask you to do that, Saul. Go ahead and read. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. See, in his mind, brothers and sisters, he got a good reason to not follow God. Mm. In his mind, he's got a legitimate reason. He has a legitimate reason in his mind. And that's part of the slippery slope that we get on. Mm -hmm. We would do some things or not do some things, and in our mind, we've already made up a reason to ourselves why that's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not okay if it's outside of the instructions from God. Mm -hmm. It is not okay. But in his mind, it is. Go ahead and read, brother. 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. So, so Samuel said, hey, I got to go holler at the Lord now. <laughs> See what he want me to do with you or tell you. Go ahead and read, brother. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, mm -hmm. was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? So he said, when you was just a little regular old man, the Lord anointed you to be king. Do you remember that, mm -hmm. Saul? Go ahead and read. And the Lord sent thee on a journey. And said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. He said, fight them until there's none left. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Do y'all see that? I know we looking at, okay, well, is not killing people evil? If God told you to kill them and you don't kill them, is evil. Any disobedience, he call it evil. Whatever it is, it's wickedness when you break a commandment of God. Doesn't matter which one it is. Go ahead and read. And Saul said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Y'all see that lie he told? Mm -hmm. He told a lie and then put a truth on top of it. <laughs> he said, I did do what the Lord told me to do. That's a lie. Then he say, and then I brought Agag. That's the truth. You did bring him, but the Lord didn't tell you to bring him. He say, kill him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. You see that? The Lord didn't say nothing about no sacrificing to him. So this is another step that they have taken in their own mind to make what they're doing right. Well, see, we took them so we can sacrifice. No, you took them so you can grill them, man. <laughs> huh? You took them so you can put them on the grill. Man. You ain't fooling nobody. Go ahead and read. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices mm -hmm. as in obeying the voice of the Lord? No, go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes. And to hearken than the fat of ram. Go ahead, brother. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Y'all see that? When you rebel against God, he look at it like witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And what else, brother? And stubbornness. And stubbornness. Is as iniquity. Uh-huh. And idolatry. Yes. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. And whenever you reject the word of the Lord, he gonna do something to you about that. But what is he gonna do to Saul? He hath also rejected thee from being king. Go ahead. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. So now after he got that word, so now he going to go ahead and admit it. You know what I have sinned. Go ahead. For I have, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord mm -hmm. and thy word. Yes. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Oh, so now we get to the bottom of it. You feared the people over fearing God. The same God that anointed you to be king. The same God that put his spirit on you and the same God that made you a new man. Now you got all of that and you scatter the people? <laughs> yeah, you scatter the people. This was thousands of years ago and even right now in 2024, people are scared of people. Mm -hmm. 
and they undo that before they fear God. When the person can't kill you but one time, the Lord can kill you a couple times. Okay? So now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. But he went ahead and admitted it. I was scared of the people. And I'm pretty sure if you're one against a couple hundred thousand jakes, how they could intimidate you and spook you a little bit. Huh? Mm. So we something, y'all. Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. 3 and 5. But the Lord don't want you fearing people. He wants you being, being in fear of him yep. so you can obey him. Proverbs 3 and 5, my brother, go ahead and read that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, mm -hmm. and lean not unto thy own understanding. Well, see, that's what he did. Skip down and hit that verse 7. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Uh-huh. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Go ahead. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Y'all see that? So listen, trust in your God, brothers and sisters. Why? It's a healthy move for you. Mm -hmm. He said it'll be, it'll be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Don't trust in yourself. Let's go here to Luke chapter 12. Don't trust yourself and don't trust your neighbor. Trust your God. Amen. Train yourself to do what he told you to do. And it's not an overnight switch that you just flip and go do it. It takes some training. It takes some preparation. Like we can read all over the Bible where certain people prepared themselves to serve God. They prepared their mind to seek God. They prepared their mind to fear God. Okay? It's a preparation to do this. Not overnight. It takes a few steps here and there. It takes you to go through some things to get to this point. Once you get enough of them head busting from God and that hole in your money bag and got so big, it'll change your mind. Get your mind right, as they say. Luke 12, verse, five, verse 4. Go ahead and read it. And I say unto you, my friend, mm -hmm. be not afraid of them that kill the body, mm -hmm. and after that have no more that they can do. That is right. Go ahead. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. So what color are these letters in y'all's Bible? Red. So this Jesus talking, he said, but I'm going to tell you who you should be scared of. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Fear him, mm -hmm. which after he hath killed, killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yes. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. That's who you fear. So now, let's go back to Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let's go back to him. So Jesus letting you know, I'm going to tell you who you should be scared of, the one that can wake you up from that death and kill you again. That's that eternal damnation that Jesus was talking about in John chapter 5. 1 Samuel 16, and let's pick it up at verse 13. Now, this is when Samuel the priest, because the Lord already told him, Saul's not going to be the king anymore. I got to get me another one out of Jesse's house, his son David, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it, brother. Then Samuel took the horn of oil mm -hmm. and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. Go ahead. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Go ahead. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The evil spirit from who? The Lord. Y'all see that? The Lord can send that evil spirit to you. He can send them to you, and then they can get in your ear. A number of them in your ear. They, they got you in circle telling you to go do something you're not supposed to do. Telling you not to do something that you should do and then making it right in your own mind. See, it said the Lord did that, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And Saul's servant said unto him, uh -huh. Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. It was so, it was so strong that his servant saw it on him. Because he was operating in wickedness, okay? So now, let's go into Luke 11. But, and uh, you should probably put your mark in there first, Sammy, because we're coming back there. But let's go here to Luke 11. They said the Lord sent that evil spirit to trouble that brother. But you can see all over this Bible how that evil spirit come, they'll get you to do all kind of wickedness. 
And the bad part is, is if you had one when you ran into the truth and you kicked him out of your house, and then you mess around and let him come back in. That's a huge mistake. Luke 11 and 23, my brother. Luke chapter 11. Let's start at verse 23. Luke 11 and verse 23. Go ahead and read that. He that is not with me is against me. Yes. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth. So with the Lord, you're only doing one of these two things. You either helping him gather the flock or you helping him scatter the flock. Ain't no in between in that. Go ahead and read, brother. When the unclean spirit is going out of a man. So he said, let's say you operating in this world and then you run into this true word of God and then you start doing things righteous and you start seeking the kingdom first. Then you put that unclean spirit out. He says, when unclean spirit is going out of a man, go ahead and read. He walketh through dry places. Yes. Seeking rest. Uh-huh. And finding none. Go ahead. He said. I will return unto my house once I came out. He said, you know what? I'm going to go back over here with Glenn and see if he'll let me back in. Mm. Since he put me out two years ago. Let me go back over here and see if he'll let me come back home. Go ahead and read, brother. And when he cometh, mm -hmm. he findeth it swept and garnished. Go ahead. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. They are more wicked than that one was? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And they enter in yes. and dwell there. Mm -hmm. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Look, y'all see that? He said, when that unclean spirit come back home to brother Glenn, he didn't come by himself. He brought seven more spirits more wicked than he is. So how you think you going to shake off eight unclean spirits doing this to you all day, every day? How you going to shake that off? It's hard to shake one. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and now eight of them are around you and dwelling with you, in your house with you, in your car with you? You in big trouble. But let's go see what the effects of that is. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Hebrews 6. Let's go to Hebrews 6. Because we see it. Look, when you've been around it long enough, you have a long list of things in your head that you have witnessed that happened to some of your brothers and sisters around this church. We've seen it. Have we not, Brother Odin? Mm -hmm. We have seen it. it. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, let's start at verse 4. Hebrews 6 and 4. I'm talking about Brother Glenn, let that unclean spirit come back home. He bringing seven more with him. Read it, brother. For it is impossible. It is what? Impossible. It is what, brother? It is impossible. Go ahead. For those who were once enlightened uh -huh. and have tasted of the heavenly gift yes. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Y'all listen to this now. It says it's impossible for somebody who got enlightened with this true word of God and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Go ahead, brother. If they should fall away. If they fall away. To renew them again. Unto, unto, go ahead. Unto repentance. It said it's impossible to renew that person because because you let that unclean spirit come back mm. and he brought seven more with him. So at one time, you saw the Sabbath day and you understood it and you kept it. Even if you didn't clearly understand it, you was keeping it. Mm -hmm. You kept the feast days. You kept the dietary law. You kept the commandments of God. You understood that. And then all of a sudden, you decide, ain't none of that good no more. We have seen people come in here and then walk away. And then five months later, they on Facebook talking about we grilling these pork chops mm. on the Sabbath day. The law is done away with. You don't have to keep feast days anymore. We save right now. All of this mumbo jumbo because them eight unclean spirits are just like this around. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Got them doing everything. <laughs> Got them blinded. The book says it's impossible. 
Start that verse six over again, brother. What does it say? If they should fall away, uh -huh. to renew them again unto repentance, uh -huh. seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. So it's almost like you killed Jesus all over again by yourself. Man. You want that weight on you? Nope. It's like you killed him again all over, on your own. Go ahead and finish that, brother. And put him to an open shame. And then you done put him to an open shame. Because what you have done is you have given the enemies of God reason to blaspheme. Mm -hmm. Because one time you was one of his spokesmen. Mm -hmm. You spoke on his behalf, and now you back out there with the same people who was laughing at you, telling you you crazy. Now you right back out there doing what they doing. Mm -hmm. You have put God to an open shame. Let's go and hit Proverbs 21. You got eight of them in your ear. But you should be seeking first the kingdom of God, and then you can keep them away from you. Proverbs chapter 21, we just want one verse right here. Proverbs 21, we just want one verse. 21 and verse 16. Go ahead and read it. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. It said the man or the woman that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Go ahead, brother. Shall remain. In the, shall, will, shall what? Shall remain uh -huh. in the congregation of the dead. Y'all see that? Y'all know who the congregation of the dead is? People who are spiritually dead. They have no understanding of what God's righteousness is. They already have their spot plotted out in the lake of fire. Mm. If you wander away from this thing, you're going to remain over there in the congregation of the dead. Why? Because you got eight unclean spirits over there dealing with you. Why? Because in Hebrews it's written, it's impossible for you to come back over here. Mm. It's impossible for somebody to recover you to repentance. You get out on that slippery slope, brothers and sisters, it's dangerous out there. Yeah. It is dangerous out there. I have been around long enough to see these things from some people that would surprise you. That it was that person that did that. Now they out here with Christmas trees on the Facebook page. Hmm. Eating swine and catfish. Unbelievable. But it's happening and we keep seeing it. So we know these words we're reading. Because I haven't seen nobody jump out there and come back. Hmm. I saw one person. I don't know how out of the way he was, but he came back and he's recovered. I don't know. I don't know how out of the way he was, though. But I do know it was some falsehoods that was involved in him making his departure. And then once all that got cleared up, he came on back. It's, it's a scary thing to jump out of the way, y'all. But it says if you wander out of the way of the, uh, understanding, the way of truth, it says you're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. That's some scary stuff. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 31. Because Samuel had these eight unclean spirits on him, clearly. It was some on him. It said an evil spirit from the Lord troubled that brother. And let's see how bad they troubled him. 1 Samuel 31. Let's see how bad they troubled this brother. Because the books say they did. Let's see what, what happened with him. 1 Samuel 31, let's start at verse 1. 1 Samuel 31 and verse 1. 31 and 1, brother, what did it say? Now the Philistines fought against Israel, mm -hmm. and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines mm -hmm. and fell down slain in, the, in Mount Gil Gilboa. Go ahead, brother. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul mm -hmm. and upon his sons. Yes. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Melchid, Melchishua, Melchishua uh -huh. Saul's son. Go ahead. And the battle went sore against Saul, mm -hmm. and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. Go ahead. Then said Saul unto his arm armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith. Lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through mm -hmm. and abuse me. Yes. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Yes. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. So y'all know some unclean spirits was with him then. Say, man, Saul, just go and kill yourself. It'll be all right. 
Y'all see that? When is it okay to kill yourself? Never. Huh? Never. But this brother was anointed. He was made into a new man, and the spirit of the Lord was on that brother. But then the Lord sent him an evil spirit. You think he won't send you one or two? Huh? <laughs> He'll send them to you two and have you doing something crazy. Hey, so don't kill yourself, brother. But let's go look at something that happened before Saul killed himself. Let's go to 1 Samuel 22. 1 Samuel 22. And let's start at verse 11. Because David was on the run because Saul was trying to kill him. He had some envy in David. He was trying to kill David. When David had opportunity to kill the brother, but he went on about his business. So let's see what happened. 1 Samuel 22, let's pick it up at verse 11. 22 and 11. Go ahead and read it, brother. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech, mm -hmm. the priest, the son of Ahitub, mm -hmm. and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob. Mm -hmm. And they came, all of them, to the king. Go ahead. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he s answered, here, here I am, my lord. So he went to the priest's house in this city. Go ahead and read. And Saul said unto him, why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, mm -hmm. and hast inquired of God for him, that he should ride, rise against me to lie in wait as it, at this day? So now Saul is accusing the priest of helping David. They say, you gave him bread, you fed him, and then you even inquired of God for him so he can take me out. Mm. This is what Saul is accusing the priest of. Yes, David was there. David ate some of that bread, and then he gave David Goliath's sword because it was stored there for whatever the reason was, and then David just left. Mm -hmm. So let's see how the priests respond to these false accusations. Go ahead and read, brother. Then Ahimelech answered the king mm -hmm. and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David? He said, he told Saul, he said, Man, David, your most faithful servant, man. Go ahead and read. Which is the king's son-in-law. Uh, and then he said, by the way, he's married to your daughter, Saul. Mm -hmm. He's your son-in-law. Go ahead and read. And goes at thy bidding mm -hmm. and is honorable in thine house. He said, look, and he go and do everything you tell him to do, and he's honorable in your house. What verse we at, brother? At 15. Go ahead. Did I, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Mm -hmm. Be it far from me. He said, I didn't uh, 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 inquire the Lord for him. Go ahead and read. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, uh -huh. nor to all the house of my father. He said, so look, so look, king, please don't charge me with this, me and nobody else in my household. Why is that, brother? For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. He said, because I didn't know none of the business about you trying to catch up with David. All I know is he was David, he, he was one of your servants, he came in here, he needed some help, I helped him, and then he left. Mm -hmm. So this is the priest now putting his calls on the table in front of the king. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And the king said, thou shalt surely die, Oh, thou and all thy father's house. So Saul told that brother, you going to die and everybody in your house going to die. Y'all know that was them evil spirits on that brother telling him to say that. Go ahead and read. And the king said unto the footmen. So now Saul turned to his Israelite soldiers. Go ahead and read. That stood about him. Mm -hmm. Turn and slay the priests of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because their hand also is with David. Mm -hmm. And because they knew when he, had, when he fled and did not show it to me. Mm -hmm. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hands to fall upon the priests of the Lord. Y'all see that? See those guys knew something was wrong with that order Saul gave them. And I'm going to show y'all how Saul knew he was wrong by telling them that. What that next verse say, brother? And the king said to Doeg, turn thou and fall upon the priest. Uh -huh. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest, mm -hmm. and slew on that day four score and five persons that did wear a linen epoch. So they killed, so Doeg and Edomite didn't have no problem killing them Israelite priests. 85 of them. But see, you know how Saul knew he was wrong? Because he didn't do nothing to the soldiers that disobeyed him. Y'all see that? Because if the soldiers disobeyed the king, the king got all rights to punish them. Mm -hmm. But he didn't even go punish these brothers because he knew he was wrong. But them, uh, that evil spirit that troubled that brother had him doing much wickedness out there. 
But that ain't all. Go ahead and read, brother. And no, the city of the priests smote he with the edge of the sword, mm -hmm. both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. Y'all see that? He killed the women, the children, the babies, the oxen, the asses, and the sheep. But see, when the Lord told him to go do that, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> but you come over here on your own accord and you killing your own people now. But you wouldn't kill them other people who tried to kill y'all. Do y'all see that? Yep. That's an evil spirit troubling that brother. You can tell. Does it look like he was gathering or was he scattering right here? He was <laughs> scattering, brother. That was 18. Was go in, ahead and read. That was in the 19. That was in the 19. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So look, let's go to Luke chapter 14. But yeah, that evil, that evil spirit troubled Saul because he fell away from understanding. He started operating in his own righteousness. Okay? Luke 14. And let's pick it up at verse 25. Luke 14 and 25. That brother wanted to clean out the way right here. Luke chapter 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Luke 14 and 25. Go ahead and read that, brother. And there went great multitudes with him, mm -hmm. and he turned and said unto them. So now this is Jesus now. Say great multitudes went with him, and he turned. Go ahead and read. If any man come to me mm -hmm. and hate not his father. So listen to what Jesus is saying now. He said, if you come to me and you hate not your father, go ahead. And mother uh -huh. and wife yes. and children mm -hmm. and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Do y'all see this, brothers and sisters? Jesus is not saying turn on your mother and your brother and your children and your dad and kill them. He's just telling you that he should come before everybody. Mm -hmm. This is all he's saying right here. I got to be first in your life. This is seeking ye first the kingdom. Yep. Go ahead and read. And whosoever does not bear his cross mm -hmm. and come after me cannot be my disciple. Look here, if you don't weather the storm, you can't be his disciple. Because once you decide to seek the Lord, you're going to get trouble and hate from every side. And you got to weather that storm and not fold and go back out there into the world and let that unclean spirit come back home because he's going to bring seven more dudes with him. Mm. Go ahead and read. For which of you, intending to build a tower, mm -hmm. sit it not down first and count us the cost. That's right. Whether he have sufficient to finish it. So if you're going to come serve God, you better sit down and say, hmm, if I take this to mama and them, are they going to take this from me? And if they don't buy in, will I be able to do this thing by myself if I have to? That's what you got to ask yourself. Because a lot of your family and your friends and neighbors are not going to buy into this. Because it takes away from them serving their own belly, which is their own flesh. Mm -hmm. It takes away from that. Go ahead and read, brother. Lest happily, mm -hmm. after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, uh -huh. all that behold it began to mock him. Because if you go back out in the world after you try to tell them this new stuff you learned, and then next thing you know, two, three months later, you back out there with them, they're going to laugh at you and mock you. Mm. And they say, Remember when you used to come over here with your Bible? <laughs> now you come with two buckets of chitlins. Huh? You come with two buckets of chitlins now. They're going to mock you and your God. Go ahead and read, brother. Saying, this man began to build. Say, you began to do that walk. Go ahead. And was not able to finish. But you couldn't even finish it. You was too weak to finish it. Go ahead, brother. For what king, going to make war against another king, mm -hmm. sit him not down first mm -hmm. and consulteth whether he be able to with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. He said, just like a king, a king know if his army got 10,000 people, he's going to fight a king who got 20,000 warriors. Mm -hmm. You might sit down and think about that. Yep. Or you might send an ambassador and say, man, can we make some kind of peace? You know what I'm saying? Because you outnumber us two to one. Go ahead and read. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, mm -hmm. he sendeth an ambassage and desire the conditions of peace. Go ahead. 
So likewise, whosoever he be of you. So he said, whosoever you are, go ahead. That forsake him not all that he has. If you don't put me before everything you got, go ahead. He cannot be my disciple. You cannot be a disciple of God. And you are definitely not seeking the kingdom first. Mm. You serving your belly and your flesh. That's all he's saying here. So now, let's go back to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Because in that Acts 10 chapter, when Peter went in there with Cornelius and all them other strangers in there, mm -hmm. Peter said, you know something? Now I see what's happening. He said that God is no respecter of persons. Neither should we be. God ain't no respecter of persons. He said, no matter what nation you live in, where you are, the one that fear God and obey him, them the ones he accept. That's what the line is drawn in the sand at right there. Proverbs 24, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 23. Proverbs 24 and 23. Go ahead and read it. These things also belong to the wise. He said, this right here, what I'm getting ready to tell you, it belongs to the wise people, man or woman. This right here, what we about to read, belong to the wise. Go ahead and read it. It is not good. It is not good. To have respect of persons in judgment. Man, if you wise, you better eat that one. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Just because he's your cousin, don't make him right. Just because it's your sister, don't make her right. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 24. Go ahead. He that said unto the wicked, mm -hmm. thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. Go ahead. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. Look here, brothers and sisters. It says, if you say to a wicked person that they are right, if you tell a wicked per a person that's doing wrong, you're going to green light their misbehavior and tell them they're right. It said that person shall the people curse and nations going to hate that person. Mm. And then it says, start up that verse 25 over. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. So look, but to the ones that tell him, hey, you wrong in what you're doing. You need to correct your behavior, brother or sister. You was out of line for that. That wasn't right. He say, him shall be a delight. Go ahead. And a good blessing shall come upon them. And a good blessing will come upon you. If your sister wrong, tell her she wrong. Your brother wrong, tell him he wrong. It's all that simple. But you can't tell a wrong person that they're right. Because you are what the Bible call that. Strengthening the hand of the evil doer. That's what you're doing. You giving them more gas. You charging a battery on up for them to keep operating down the road. That's wrong. So now let's go to Colossians chapter three. Colossians three, and we hit this one in our lesson last night on Let Us Reason. Friends and family was the name of that one. We hit this. We hit these verses right here. Colossians three. And let's pick it up at verse twenty three. Colossians three and twenty three. 3 and 23. Go ahead and read it, brother. And whatsoever ye do, mm -hmm. do it heartily. Yes. As to the Lord yes. and not unto men. Like even if you're doing something in here, if you want a cleanup crew, if you're in a choir, if you read, if you usher in, if you're on a feast committee, whatever it is you're doing, do it to the Lord. You ain't doing it to nobody in here. You're doing it for God. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's who you're doing it for. Amen. Go ahead and read. Knowing that of the Lord, yes. ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Yes, sir. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Yes, that's why you're supposed to do it. Do your best when you do it. And I know uh, every now and then somebody somebody will tease me about how we setting up the feast. You know, I, they be like, he want us up perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We doing this for the Lord, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I might come across a little angle, and some of us might come across like that, too. It's because we know this is for God, y'all. And we want it right, that's all. But go ahead and read, brother. But he that doeth wrong mm -hmm. shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. Mm -hmm. And there is no respect of person. Again, the book say that. Romans 2.11 say that. Ain't no respect of person, so God don't have it. Neither should we, because we can fall into that trap, y'all. Mm -hmm. There's a trap over there in respect of person. Okay, so look, let's go ahead and do Deuteronomy 8. 
You know what? Let's skip Deuteronomy 8. Let's go ahead to Matthew 4. because Matthew 4 says the same thing. Matthew 4, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Because Jesus just quoted Moses right here. We should hit it, but for the sake of time, let's go to Matthew 4, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. 4 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into mm -hmm. the wilderness mm -hmm. to be tempted of the devil. Yes. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. he was after her afterward and hungry. Yes. And when the tempter came to him, mm -hmm. he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Go ahead. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Some of them words. Every word. Just the New Testament. Every word. Y'all see that? Because you run into people that say you got to do it out of uh, 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 one side of the book, either Old Testament or the New. But if you're dealing with the right person, they can show you Old Testament stuff in the New Testament. And they can show you New Testament stuff in the Old Testament. It's two Testaments, but it's one word. Mm -hmm. Two Testaments, but this is one word. So Jesus said, you should live by every word of God. Mm -hmm. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it started in Genesis 1 and right here down to Revelation 22. Okay? Mm -hmm. Live by that. Seek ye first the kingdom. Let's go into Amos the fifth chapter. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, and then you can live. Before you even get to getting in the kingdom, the Lord will bless you right here in this life, right now, today. Just go ask somebody who the Lord has blessed. They'll tell you. He's still in the blessing business. Is he not? Of course he is. But he's that if God. He always saying, if you do this, then I'll do that. Mm -hmm. That's him right there. He's a covenant God. Okay? So, yeah. Amos, chapter 5, verse 1, 5 and 1. What does it say, brother? Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. So Amos was a prophet, but he was from Judah. He was from the, the southern nation. Okay? After they had split. He was from Judea, but the Lord sent him up to the northern tribes. And that's why he said against you, O house of Israel. Go ahead, brother. The virgin of Israel is fallen. Mm -hmm. She shall no more rise. Mm -hmm. She is forsaken upon her land. Mm -hmm. There is none to raise her up. Y'all see that? He told them northern tribes, y'all going to fall and rise no more. Because the Lord have went and saved Israel every time they went into somebody's control. The Philistines and whoever it was. But he told the northern tribes, y'all going to fall this time, and you ain't going to get back up. And he wasn't lying, because when they got taken out, they never came back home. Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. For thus said the Lord God. For thus said the Lord God. The city that went out by a thousand shall mm. leave an hundred, mm -hmm. and that which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten mm -hmm. to the house of Israel. Go ahead. For thus said the Lord unto the house of Israel. Seek ye me, and ye shall live. That's all the Lord keeps saying. Hey, chase me, and you will live. Look for me, you will live. Obey me, and you will live. Mm -hmm. Skip down and hit that verse 6, brother. Seek the Lord, mm -hmm. and ye shall live. Yes. Lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph. Because we know Joseph's children sat on the throne in the northern tribes, whereas David's children sat on the throne in the southern tribes, and down there in Judea, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why he called Israel the house of Joseph. Go ahead, brother. And devour it, mm -hmm. and there be none to quench it in Bethel. He see that the Lord, he said, y'all better see the Lord. He going to break out like a fire on y'all. So, so Amos was up in them northern tribes talking to them. So let's go into that seventh chapter. Because Amaziah, the priest up there, got hot with him. Just like uh, uh, the priest got mad at Jeremiah. I think Pasha was his name. Slap Jeremiah in that 20th chapter of Jeremiah. Because every time the servant of God show up and speak that truth, somebody's going to be mad at him and hate him for that. So, so Amos was up there, and they got upset with the brother. Let's see what happened. Amos 7 and 10. Go ahead and read it. Then Am Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, mm -hmm. sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, 
Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. The land is not able to bear all his words. Y'all see that? So he goes to the king and say, hey, Amos is conspiring. Amos ain't conspiring against nobody, man. He went up there and told them what the Lord told him to say. Mm -hmm. And he said, the land cannot withstand his words. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Go ahead and read, brother. For thus Amos said, mm -hmm. Jeroboam shall die by the sword. So now Amos told them, your king, he's going to die by the sword. Go ahead. And Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. And he said Israel going to be led away captive out of their own land. And the Assyrians did come in and take them out. And they never went back after that. Go ahead and read. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, mm -hmm. O thou seer, yes. go. Flee thee away into the land of Judah, mm. and there eat bread, and prophesy there. So the priest told Amos, Amos, won't you go back down south to Judah, prophesy down there, and eat your bread down there, but get out of here, away from us. Go ahead and read. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, mm -hmm. for it is the king's chapel, yes. and it is the king's court. Go ahead. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, mm -hmm. I was no prophet. So Amos told him, he said, look, man, I wasn't a prophet. Go ahead. Neither was I a prophet's son. And my dad wasn't a prophet. Go ahead. But I was an herdman uh -huh. and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. He said, look, man, I was a herdsman and I gathered sycamore fruit. I wasn't no prophet. Go ahead and read. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And then he told, hey, man, while I was following my flock, the Lord came and got me. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto me, mm -hmm. go, prophesy unto my people Israel. And the Lord sent him up there. And that's what he was telling the priests up there. Go ahead and read, brother. Now, therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. He said, so hear my words, Amaziah. You telling me to, to not prophesy against Israel, but the Lord told me to do it, so I got to do it. But go ahead and read. What else did the Lord say? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. Your wife will end up being a harlot in the city. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. Uh -huh. And thy land shall be divided by line. Mm -hmm. And thou shall die in a polluted land. And you're going to get carried away to the land of the stranger, and that's where you're going to die at. Go ahead. And Israel sh shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. So Amos, even though he had the people coming against him, he still stood on his square and did his job mm. because he had to. So look, let's go into Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ruth 1 and 1. So yeah, you have opposition. You're going to face some adversaries and some adverse times, adversity. You're going to run into some trouble, but you've got to stay on your job, brothers and sisters. You can't let, let man uh, scare you and sway you, okay? Ruth. Chapter 1, my brother, and pick it up at verse 1. Ruth 1 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled mm -hmm. that there was a famine in the land. Yes. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to so sojourn in the country of Moab, mm -hmm. he and his wife and, yes. his, and his two sons. Yes. And the name of the man was El Elimelech. Mm -hmm. And the name of his wife, Naomi. Yes. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Shilion. Yes. Uh, Ephratite, Ephratite uh -huh. of Bethlehem, Judah. Mm -hmm. And they came into the country of Moab and, and continued there. So there was a famine in the land of Judah. So some of those people went to the land of Moab and they talking about this one man and his wife, Naomi, and they had two sons. One of those sons married Ruth of the Moabites. Go ahead. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left and her two sons. Uh -huh. and, they took, and they took them wives of the women of Moab the name of the one was Orpha, mm -hmm. and the name of the other Ruth. Yes. And they dwelt there about ten years. Go ahead. And M Milan and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So now her sons died, her husband died, so all she got left are the two daughter-in-laws, mm -hmm. okay? Go ahead and read. Then she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Go ahead. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was mm -hmm. and her two daughters-in-law with her. 
and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. So now they was headed back to Judah. Skip down, hit that verse 11. What did it say, brother? And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Mm -hmm. Are there yet any more sons in my womb that that they may be your husbands. So Naomi turned to them two sisters and said, look, y'all need to go on back to the land of Moab because I don't have no more sons to give. Skip on down, my brother. Hit that verse 14. And they lifted up their voice mm -hmm. and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. So Orpah went on back home, but, but Ruth stayed with her. Go ahead and read. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is going back unto her people mm -hmm. and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Go ahead. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For why, brother? For whither thou goest, I will go, mm -hmm. and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Mm -hmm. Thy people shall be my people, mm -hmm. and thy God my God. Do you see that? So Ruth said, No, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to stick to your God, the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. So now, let's, let's go into the fourth chapter, and let's see how the Lord blessed Ruth because she was seeking him first, okay? Ruth chapter 4, and let's pick it up at verse 13 because I was saying earlier, and we used to have four more places after this, but as I was saying earlier, if you seek the kingdom, in your seeking of the kingdom, the Lord will bless your home. He'll bless your marriage. He'll bless your peace, your food, your water, your job. He'll bless whatever it is you have. But you got to put him first. It is all that simple. Mm. Ruth 4 and 13. What does it say, brother? So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. Mm -hmm. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. Go ahead. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without the kinsman, mm -hmm. that his name may be famous in Israel. Go ahead. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life mm -hmm. and a nourisher of thine old age. Yes. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. Go ahead. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Mm -hmm. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is a father of Jesse, the father of David. Y'all see that? So David come out of Ruth. And she wasn't an Israelite. She was from Moab. But her husband was Israel. So mm -hmm. that made the children Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez begat Hezron. Now Perez was the twin brother of uh, Zerah. These were, Perez was the son of Judah. So, so, so Jacob was Perez's grandfather. So you had Perez. He had Hezron. Go ahead. And Hezron begat Ram, mm -hmm. and Ram begat Amminadab, mm -hmm. and Amminadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, mm -hmm. and Salmon begat Boaz, mm -hmm. and Boaz begat Obed. So look, and Salmon, he was the one that, uh, I can't remember exactly, he was either the son or the husband of, of, of uh, the lady in uh, Jericho. What's her name? The harlot from Jericho. I can't think of her name right now. But anyway, but go ahead and read, brother. And Obed begat Jesse. And Obed had Jesse. And Jesse begat David. So I just went here to show you how the Lord blessed Ruth. On her way to getting into the kingdom, he blessed her in this life. Which is another example that if you trying your best to seek the kingdom first, the Lord will take care of everything you got right here. Okay? So now, let's go in 1 Peter chapter 5, and we just have... Three more places. First Peter 5. We're going to pick it up at that first verse. First Peter 5 and 1. First Peter 5 and 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read that one, brother. The elders which are among you I exhort, mm -hmm. who am also an elder yes. and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, mm -hmm. and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. So look. This is Peter talking. Now, what is, the what is it that the elders should be doing? Hit that, go ahead, verse 2. Go ahead. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Go ahead. Taking the oversight thereof, mm -hmm. not by constraint, but willingly. Not that you're being made to feed the flock, but you're doing it willingly. Go ahead, brother. Not for filthy lucre. Not for the money. But of a ready mind. Go ahead. 
neither as being lords over God's heritage, uh -huh. but being examples of the flock. And we all should be examples one to another. Everybody sitting in this room is supposed to be an example to everybody sitting in this room. All of us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. And when the Lord split them clouds, go ahead. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that, yes. that fadeth not away. So skip down to verse 6 and continue. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he may exalt you in due time. Yes, sir. Casting all your care upon him, mm -hmm. for he careth for you. One more verse. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And I mean Satan don't take breaks, nor does he take vacation. He's looking for every reason, any reason, to get you off your square, okay? Mm -hmm. So look, let's go here, James chapter 1. James is right in front of 1 Peter. James chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 5. James 1 and verse 5. And we should all be examples to each other. Putting that kingdom first. James 1 and 5. 1 and 5. Go ahead and read it. If any of you lack wisdom, mm -hmm. let him ask of God. Yes. That giveth to all men liberally. Yes. And abrade of not, and it shall be given him. Go ahead. But let him ask in faith, mm -hmm. nothing wavering. Yes. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. He said, look, you ask the Lord for that wisdom, but don't ask him why you wavering about it. Okay? Because you have to be set in whatever it is you're doing. Go ahead and read. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Because if you wavering, you ain't going to get nothing from the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded person, you unstable in everything. Mm. You need to go and make up your mind what you're going to do. You going to serve him or not? You going to obey or not? Skip down to that verse 12. What that say, brother? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the person that endure temptation. Why, brother? For when he is tried, mm -hmm. he shall receive the crown of life. Yes. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And we know that Jesus told you in John 14 and 15, if you love him, you keep an old commandment. Mm -hmm. You keeping the commandments if you love him. So he said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Let's go hit that second Tim, second Timothy. He said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to everybody that loves him. So it didn't say he promised it to everybody. Everybody that loved him is who he promised it to. Amen. And if you love him, you don't have to say it, because he's just watching. He can look at you and see if you love him or not. Mm -hmm. Huh? Speaking of crowns, let's look at something Paul said. And let's see who can say this. 2 Timothy chapter 4, my brother. 2 Timothy 4, let's pick it up at verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. Go ahead and read it. Preach the word. Yes. Be instant in season, out of season. Mm -hmm. Reprove, rebuke. Yes. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Go ahead. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Look, he said the time's going to come when people will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they're going to run to somebody that's going to teach them what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. You're going to turn your ears away from this truth. Go ahead. And shall be turned unto fables. And you're going to be turned to some fables, things you can't even read in here. Go ahead, brother. But watch thou in all things. Mm -hmm. Endure afflictions. Mm -hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Yes. Make full proof of thy ministry. Go ahead. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Go ahead. I have fought a good fight. So look, Paul said, I have fought that good fight. Go ahead. I have finished my course. He finished. I have kept the faith. And he kept his faith in the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, mm -hmm. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. He said he got that crown of life laid up, waiting on him. I wish I could say that and be 100% about that. Mm. Ooh. 
He said the Lord going to give it to him at that day. Mm -hmm. And not to him only. Go ahead and read. And not to me only. Yes. But unto all of them also that love his appearance. And he's going to give it to some more people, the ones that's going to love his appearance. Because you can read that somebody not going to love it. Because when he busts them clouds, they say all tribes on the earth going to mourn. Mm. Oh, my goodness. We've been playing church. <laughs> the Lord bust them clouds wide open. And y'all see that it's real. Y'all see that he look like a brown dude with, <laughs> with some dreads or some locks on. Yeah. They gonna be they gonna be running and crying, okay? So look, Philippians two. This is our last spot. Philippians chapter two. Philippians two. And we gonna read one verse, verse twelve. Philippians two and twelve. And yeah, your grandmother probably did pray for you. I'm sure your mom prayed for you too. But at the end of the day, the reality is this verse we are gonna read right here. Philippians 2 and 12, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 12. Philippians 2 and 12, go ahead and read that, brother. Wherefore, my beloved, mm -hmm. as ye have always obeyed, yes. not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence, uh -huh. work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So guess what? Your salvation is in your hands. He said, work out your own salvation. Work it out yourself yeah. with fear and trembling. And I'm telling you, according to what we read today, if you seeking the kingdom first, if you put make that your number one priority, not only will you make it into the kingdom, but the Lord will bless you right here, right now, in today's life that you're living. And we all need those blessings. We all need our enemies to be, to be put at peace with us. We all need a little bit of that. And I hope somebody got edified with today's lesson, and I thank you for your time. Okay? Yeah. We're going to have some announcements for today.